Okay, so last but not least is our report from the field. This is a project with uh, Dr. Terry Nelson that she began last year. And you know, last year when we did a report from the field, it was like a project that had been going on for longer. But this project is impressive because it grew so quickly. So uh, Terry Nelson from Management and Marketing will talk, talk about the Leadership Fellows Junior Program with you. Not for somebody five foot one. <laughs> oh well. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank uh, CCL for having me here. And unlike most of the people who have talked today, I wasn't looking for something like this to happen uh, in, in conjunction with our university. Um, I had started here as an assistant professor of leadership in the fall of 2013. And in a year's time, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm ready to give back to the community, something on my own as an individual. And having come from a very humble background, um, very um, poor beginning, first generation to get my master's, bachelor's, and my PhD, I wanted to go to a community that reflected that background and, and give back. And so I happened to bump into uh, Judy. She said, well, you need to go talk to Clark Middle School. Within a week's time, I went, ran into Leo Meadows. He said, you need to go talk to Clark Middle School. And I'm like, okay, evidently there's something at this Clark Middle School that I need to go and do. And so I went there and I met with uh, Principal Williams. And I said, okay, here's what I, you know, I'm a professor of leadership and I am also the faculty director of the Leadership Fellows Program, which is a mentoring program where we take um, some of our undergrad and our MBA students and find them a mentor within the business community. People who are CEOs, HR directors, and they mentor these students one-on-one -on -one for a full academic year. So I'm sitting there telling uh, Principal Williams, saying, this is what I do. She said, well, uh, why can't I have a Leadership Fellows Junior Program? I'm like, oh my God, I'm new. I don't know. Can you have one? So <laughs> I go back to my dean, and I'm like, she wants a Leadership Fellows Junior Program. He said, great, run with it. So in spring 2015, I met uh, Principal Williams on December 3rd, and we started talking about this. I said, okay, yeah, I can get this up and going in the fall of 2015. She said, no, I want it in spring 2015. I'm like, it's the holidays. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm like, okay, but we, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. So we started out, we call it the CBP and Clark Middle School Leadership Fellows Program. 18 eighth grade students. And we did six leadership development sessions. We met twice a month. The first one was the leader in me. The second, beyond traditional IQ, cultural and emotional IQ. Now, let me warn you, I don't have any kids. So I was like, um, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of me doing the hashtag oopsism, communicating across cultures in the 21st. I said, okay, I'm gonna try this on the eighth graders, but I better get permission. So I told Dr. W I mean, Principal Williams, is this okay? She said, students need to know about some of the implicit biases that they may have. So we're in there, and I'm doing the implicit bias, I'm going through the workshop, talking about different cultures, and this young girl started crying. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And so, but here's why, she was so moved about some of the things that we say to each other as human beings that are hurtful, that we don't realize. So, we went ahead and from there we did negotiation conflict resolution. Dr. Frank Jeffries, this is a module that he actually takes out of his class and brought. And then, believe it or not, I have a fear of public speaking. So, seriously. And so I decided to do a session on public speaking. Hear my voice, we're gonna have a competition. Judy was one of our, um, one of our judges. The students loved it. I'm like, okay, I wasn't like that in eighth grade. Okay, so. <laughs> Went ahead with did, we did business uh, ethics, and also lastly ended with Paul Wasco doing a life planning exercise to prepare for college success. Sounds like a great program, right? And then also, I'm like, okay, my uh, leadership fellows at the college level had to do a community engagement project, but so do you. They ended up doing a project called Empty Bowls. So they created these bowls, pottery, they painted them, sold them, did about $1,100, and donated some of the proceeds to Bean Cafe. And lastly, they graduated in April 2015 alongside the college level, level leadership fellows. So that was exciting for them to walk across the stage, shake hands with the dean, but really giving them that insight or that feel of what it means to be in college. These are some of the artifacts. 
on the top left there, that is the, um, the public speaking. That's where we were making potteries. My pottery didn't sell. It was really ugly. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, evidently, media loves children, so this um, Alaska Business <laughs> Monthly came to me and said, okay, we want to do an article on the Leadership Fel Fellows Junior. I said, oh, no, 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 no. You got to take the college level, too. They come as a package. <laughs> so they did one on the juniors, and they did one on the, on the, on the um, college level. And this is the kickoff where you'll be amazed, the students, the way Principal Williams, the first day we kicked off, she had them to go around shaking people's hands, introducing themselves, basically doing an elevator speech. So that was the uh, first year. So, okay, that's grand and dandy. You know, I'm up here talking about, but what did the juniors think? What did the children actually think of the program? So I had them at the end of the, of the session, so, okay, tell me what you like about the program and tell me what you didn't like. You know, I really didn't want to hear what they didn't like. The kids, they're going to rip me apart. But check this out. So one young lady said, I like how you were real. You were just yourself. And that put forth more trust between us. So building the trust of those students was very important. And I always brought snacks. Maybe that helped too. Okay. <laughs> what the program can improve on is uh, we also talked Play, uh, plans and shortcuts to go to college. They wanted to know how can I get uh, support, scholarships to go to college. And I'm like, baby girl, I can't help you. I don't know, but I'm going to do something about it. Another one said, some reasons why I like this program is how Dr. Nelson brings in guest speakers to talk about our futures and college choices. Another reason is how this program is so cooperative and family-like. It makes me feel like I'm at home with my real family overall. Another one said, I like professors come and teach us stuff and give advice about our future. How I can learn so much, it helps me with my future. These students are actually wanting to know more about how to improve, you know, what, what the future can hold for them. Another one said, uh, kept us entertained, uh, found interesting ways to uh, introduce things, made us think about trying what we wouldn't know. Do think about that we don't think about in our regular life. So we expose them to something new, some new knowledge. And lastly, things to improve. Okay, here we go. They wanted more people to come. They wanted more time, more activities. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. They wanted more. So this is where they graduated. These are the juniors on the left-hand side, and these are my actual college level. So they came and they graduated at that time. So this is great, but here's the cool thing. We decided to expand the program. Instead of just doing it a semester, we're gonna kick it off. And I said, we're gonna tell you, you want more time? We're gonna give you more time. So we kicked it off on October the 3rd and we're running the full academic year. And so now it is called the UAA and Clark Middle School Distinguished Leadership Academies because three other colleges have jumped on board. It's amazing how this has organically grown on campus without me asking people. They are coming up to me, I want to be a part of this. So now we have over 100 students between the sixth and eighth grade. Those sixth graders did something else. I told her I only wanted seventh and eighth graders, but they were, the sixth graders look different. Okay, so we got four tracks that we offer now. CBP Leadership Fellows Junior Academy, the CB, COE College of Education Junior Educator Academy, Dr. Ginger, um, Blackman is over that, and the College of Health. They, the principal promoted it as pre-med. I'm like, wait a minute, they're getting more people than me. So everybody wants to be on the pre-med track. So she said she could have filled at least three more classes of that. And then lastly, the CBP dot coders. This is Dr. Dennis Drinker, where the students are coming on campus and actually learning how to design websites. They wanted more speakers, I got them more speakers. So through the Leadership Fellows Program, I got people coming from the AI, academic, innovation, and e-learning. Let me get that back. So uh, Dave Dannenberg came up to me and said, I want to do something with the kids. I'm like, okay, fine, cool. And then I said, I went to Diane uh, Hirschberg, I said, would you be interested? She said, most definitely. So she's going to come and teach the students about ICER stuff, econ, something that I probably need to learn. And the College of Arts and Sciences, uh, Claire Dannenberg, came up. She said, I want to do a session. And she's doing the coolest session of all. So I'm originally from Little Rock, Arkansas. And I was born and raised in the South, and I was told you cannot say the word ain't. But she told me that is a legitimate word. 
She said, it is, it is technically correct. I'm like, cool, that's all I wanted to know. <laughs> and then we have a couple of more professors from our College of Business and Public Policy that are jumping on board to hold sessions too. Uh, so now that one of more sessions, we will be given 10 sessions throughout the full academic year. And I thank God for Judy for recommending a uh, CCEL, Community Engaged Student Assistant, Nick Morrow, if you please raise, stand up, Nick. Nick is one of our college level leadership fellows alumni. So like you said, I could not have done it without him. So thank you for recommending that. And since the students were asking about college information, we're gonna have a mini conference at the end. One of the things that I had a difficulty of being first generation, and I'll never forget this, my father, he uh, had 10 siblings. None of them went to college. And I graduated with, you know, I had Junior Honor Society, National Beta Club, he didn't know what that meant. And I went to him, I said, hey, you know, can you give me some money to go to school? He said, why should I? Nobody in my family went to school. So you don't know what kids are dealing with. So at this mini conference, we're gonna ask the students to bring in their parents. And at this mini conference, we're gonna hold uh, information about financial aid, the importance of being involved in a multicultural center, uh, bringing uh, students so they can actually talk to Clark, uh, middle school students that are actually here now. So that's our goal. And they will graduate again in April, oh, let's just say 2016. Okay, it's 2016, <laughs> okay? And just to give you an idea of how this had grown, on the left-hand side, that was the first cohort, and on the right-hand side, and this is not all of the students. There's about 100 students involved, and this happened in a 10-month period. And I could not have done it on my own. I appreciate all of the colleges that have come forth and jumped on board these kids they will amaze you. They will bring tears to your eyes because they want and thirst for the knowledge. So this is the pathway for them to higher education. Thank you.